if we are to have a 22nd century, we have to be as brave and as courageous as Rachel Carson was to insist that the paradigm shift, and we have to be as staunch and as steadfast as the founders of this organization and their renewers and their allies and their partners. Our children's children's children will blame us or thank us based on our effort. Thank you very much. Middlebury are here. I believe that's how I met you, Nina, uh, what, six years ago. So, um, and by the way, give Nina Otter a big round of applause. She didn't introduce herself. One of the great young leaders in America. One of the great climate champions in America. Um, you know, I think the main thing that we have to do in terms of being for something is to, is to deal with that myth that the governor spoke about. That you either have to love your children or your grandchildren. That's basically the myth. If you love your children, then you want to put food on the table, grow the economy, don't worry about pollution, fix it later on, just grow, 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 poison everything, pollute everything, but you can put food on the table for your kids today. You just, your grandkids just won't have a planet to live on. Um, or the re reverse is if you believe, if you love your grandchildren and you want them to have a healthy planet, don't do anything. Just stand very still. Right? right? Then you'll have a healthy planet. It's just your kids will starve. Right? That's the, that fallacy. What we can be for is work that heals the planet. Yes, work, industry, enterprise that heals the planet. And I think if we stand for that, and the young people, I think, have, a, have a, 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 an instinct for this. I think we'll, we, we'll uh, and if we're willing to actually do what it takes to make those things work, which sometimes is, is I think, where I'm seeing these things held up, I think we can make a big difference. Thanks. Uh, the second question is, since the publishing of your book, how much has President Obama done to implement the so-called Green New Deal? And what are the obstacles he's facing? You know, to answer that question, I want to bring somebody to the stage. Um, I don't think that we've gone anywhere near as far down the road of the Green New Deal as we need to. But the one halting step that indicated that it was possible to stop moving down the road toward a gray economy and begin to turn around it didn't come out of Congress. It didn't come out of the White House. It didn't come out of even the big mainstream established environmental movement. 
It came out of the determination of young people through an organization called 350.org. That was the first real hope that you saw. And my leader and mentor in this whole fight, and who has been the whole time, uh, the person who I think has the best grip on what we can do and what we need to do and what we must do is not me. Uh, and it's not anybody in Washington, D.C. It's Brother Bill McKibben. Bill McKibben's right here. I think you need to get up here and let us know what to do. Get up here, Bill McKibben. Get up. <laughs> 